Hey guys, it's Chris from Dan's Autical Shop, and today I'm going to show you how I painted this boat using All Grip. Hey guys, Chris from Dan's Autical Shop. So today is a very exciting day. So we are nearing the last stages of our Chris Craft project boat. And this one is going to be a lot of fun because we are repainting the side of the boat. So we're going to use All Grips Extreme Black for the hull sides. And there's Snow White for above the Rob Royal. So it's going to look really nice, a little modern. Uh, as a recap, we have the red bright side paint here as kind of a differentiation between our bottom paint and the sides. And then Interlux is Micron CSC on the very bottom. So we definitely have to say thank you to All Grip and to our friends at Midwest Marine Supply for helping us out with this project. Uh, lots of technical support and everything like that. Uh, so very excited, tune in, it's gonna be great and the boat's gonna look awesome when it's done. Okay, so we are on day one of our painting project. So today is all about surface preparation. So we are going to wipe down and clean the hull of the boat. And we are also gonna sand the boat. So the first step is a wipe down. What we don't want to do in a wipe down is take away any wax, any grease, anything that we've rubbed against uh, that's gotten to the fiberglass so we don't get any surface contamination when we put our primer on and then when we put our paint on. So for that, we are going to be using uh, All Grips T0115 wax and grease remover. So in this application, we are going to do like a wipe on, wipe off method. We're going to wipe on wet and then wipe off dry. So that way we're going to clean the surface, wipe it, clean the surface, wipe it. And we'll keep going and we're going to change out our rags every few feet and that way we don't recontaminate a new area. We're probably going to do this once, then we're going to sand, we'll do it again, then we'll maybe do a little bit more sanding, then wipe it down one more time, make sure we got everything out, and then we'll be applying our primer. So once we're done our wipe down, we are going to be using some sandpaper to uh, open the surface up. So for that, uh, because it's our primer coat, we're going to start with 120 grit sandpaper. We're using 3M's uh, blue sheets that nicely stick to the bottom of our sanding sticks. So that'll make it easy to do. They also do have vents in there if we want to hook up a vacuum to it to suck the dust out. We're not going to do that because this building's really dusty. So we'll just be moving dust around, uh, but we will blow all the dust off, wipe everything down before we do any kind of priming. And then lastly, most important for safety equipment, we are using 3M's respirator. We have the vapor cartridges on here and we have the pre-dust filters on here as well. Uh, we're going to have these on nice and tight and everyone's going to be wearing them as soon as we start to open up chemicals and that way we're all safe. We'll wear them until we're out of the building and then we'll take them off. It's important to clean the surface of the boat prior to applying any kind of primers or paints and for this we're using All Grips uh, Wax and Grease Remover. So we are wiping on wet and wiping off dry which is their two rag method. We're going to do this a few times to make sure that the surface of the boat is clean before we apply our primer. Okay, so we finished out our wipe down solvent. So today is priming day. We're using All Grips uh, epoxy primer, one to one mix ratio, and then thinning it for brushing and rolling. For brushing and rolling, we're gonna use the West System foam rollers. I like these ones because they put it on really thin, makes it easier to tip, uh, and they stand up to you know moving around and using the epoxy. For tipping it out, we're gonna use the Red Tree foam brushes and a couple bristle brushes in detail areas where we need to. After that, we're gonna sand our primer coats down with 320 uh, before we paint, and then we'll do this uh, 400 after that. One of the key components of this paint is the mixing. Uh, follow the instructions, make sure you're mixing properly, uh, and definitely have your safety equipment on. So for our application tools, we initially started with using a foam roller and a foam brush. Uh, we found this technique created a lot of bubbles and we ended up having a little bit of extra paint, so we're getting some runs. 
Uh, after consulting with our all grip representative, they had suggested a mohair roller and a bristle brush. Uh, we found that worked a lot better. We got smoother finish, less bubbles uh, overall, was just easier to control the paint and apply it. One of the things with uh, you know painting any kind of boat, if you're doing any different colors or you're painting around things, you do have to tape. Uh, taping is kind of a tedious thing and as far as I'm concerned, but it's definitely worthwhile. Uh, make sure that you're using a high quality tape. This is a, a strong paint. You don't want it eating through the tape or bleeding through. And uh, don't be afraid to change out your tape if you're taking a couple days to do your project. So uh, don't leave it on there thinking that like it's going to hold up for a week or two weeks. Uh, you don't want to test the theory and have paint come through, which is what happened to me in a couple scenarios. But uh, you know, take your tape off, retape, check your tape, make sure that it's where you want it to be so that when you're done, you have the, the final finish and you have the paint where you want it. So there's definitely an art form to applying a paint like All Grip. Uh, if you put it on too thin, you'll get some dry spots. If you put it on too thick, you'll get some sags and runs. So it's something I would definitely recommend practicing with uh, on a sample piece of fiberglass, a sample piece of wood, something like that, and simulate the surfaces that you're about to paint. So if you're doing vertical surfaces, practice on that. If you're doing around edges and things like that, you know, have an idea of how you want to do it. Uh, it definitely, you know, unless you're an expert, probably won't turn out the way you want the first time. Uh, you can definitely sand it, correct it, fix it. Uh, my advice from learning from experience would be that if you have any small imperfections you're not happy with, definitely address them before you put on a second coat. Um, I kind of assumed that some areas, you know, you wouldn't see, but then after finishing and seeing some bright lights, you, know, you definitely can see those little spots which I plan to redo in the winter time, but to save yourself the trouble, uh, take your time, give yourself extra time to do this, and uh, take, go through it, sand it smooth, get it the way you want, then apply your paint. And if there's something you're not happy with, you can always sand it out and do it over again, but um, it definitely takes a lot of practice and a little bit of learning to get this right. In this video you'll notice that we chose to wear gloves while applying the paint. Again, this is a, a paint with some toxicity to it, things you don't want on your skin. So make sure that you invest in quality gloves that are uh, chemical resistant. We use the ones by West System, they work pretty well. A couple times they ripped, you'd have to swap them out. So have lots on hand, change them out when you think you have a hole or a rip or something like that in them. Uh, but make sure you're protecting yourself while you're using this kind of paint. One of the key components of this paint is the mixing. I would definitely recommend that you follow the instructions to a T in terms of mixing. Uh, a couple practice things, I didn't necessarily do that and you can see issues in the paint and the way that it sets up afterwards. So go through the instructions, they've got great SDS sheets that will explain everything. Uh, if you are unsure or you're wondering about your particular scenario, uh, they've got a great tech department to provide some input there as well. So. Well, anytime you're painting a boat, it's typically challenging because boats are big and awkward to move and therefore you end up either painting them outside, you're painting them in maybe a barn or storage building, or you're painting them under shrink wrap or any kind of tent scenario. Uh, so this kind of applies to all paints, not just all grip, but you want to make sure you have your space as clean as possible so that you don't end up with dust in your paint. In our scenario, we painted inside a building. It was a dirty building, but we uh, soaked the floor. We tried to keep movement to a minimum so that we weren't stirring up dust and we turned off the furnace, uh, any kind of windows were closed, things like that. That definitely helped, but we still got some dust in our paint. Uh, I think in the winter time, we are going to create little tents of draped plastic around the sides and we'll redo a section at a time where we have some kind of clean cut lines to follow from. That way you won't see where we've stopped and started. I uh, definitely would recommend that if you're going to paint your boat, you got to really plan out how you're going to do it. Uh, while you might get lucky and be able to do it outside, any kind of wind, any kind of bugs, any kind of dust will end up in your paint and you will see it. So you do need to protect that area. In my experience, doing this is uh, best done in small spaces. So if you can do one hull side at a time 
or section of the deck where there's a clean line for you to start and stop, that would be much easier to manage kind of that controlled space, keep it clean, and then uh, get your paint on, let it cure without getting debris in it. Okay, so we are finally done painting the side of our boat uh, and the inside. Turned out really good. I'm uh, very really happy with it. It's got a really nice smooth finish. Uh, it is still curing, so try not to touch it too much, but it does look like it'll be a very hard finish, which would be great in case I happen to rub into the dock a little bit. Uh, so overall, this was uh, a great learning experience. I have to thank Midwest Marine Supply in Detroit, Michigan and All Grip for their technical tips and tricks uh, for getting a really good finish. We called them fairly often while we were doing the painting just to run things by them, talk about different issues or ideas we're having and make sure that we're kind of following what we should be doing. So that was very helpful. A couple things uh, that we noticed early on uh, when we were thinning out our primers initially we didn't thin it enough and it was setting up a little bit too fast. Uh, that gave us some extra brush strokes in the primer finish which wasn't ideal so we ended up sanding that and starting over again. Uh, and then again with the paint uh, we ended up switching from foam rollers to mohair rollers. We ended up with a little bit of brush strokes here and there. Overall we were able to sand most of that out and get it nice and smooth. Uh, before doing our last coat. So I think it looks pretty good. You still can see a little bit in there when you look up close, uh, but from a few feet, you're not gonna see anything. So overall, we're happy with it. I mean, it is our first time, it looks pretty good. Uh, one thing that did happen is our red water line, which is that interlock spread bright side red. Some of it came off with our tape and some of it, uh, we had a little bit of bleed through with the black underneath the tape. So we are, once the paint has cured after a couple weeks, going to go back, we'll tape the, uh, each side of the red. We'll recoat that red just to make it look nice and, uh, and then we'll be ready for that. So overall, uh, this boat, we are going to start putting it back together. Plan is to have it in the water in three weeks. So the next time you see any videos of it, it should be floating at the dock. Okay, and here's how the boat looks in the water. Uh, it is really nice to have it now floating at the dock gone over a couple quick rides, tested it out, you know, still have a few things to do on the inside, some things to put back together and make sure they're working properly. But overall, uh, it's running great. It's nice to go out for rides and really looking forward to enjoying it all summer long. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.